Hey, greetings everybody, welcome back to the channel. And so three weeks ago, I made a video on the Google Pixel 5a and I said it couldn't be beat in 2024 and that's just my personal thoughts, okay? Realistically, this is not the most perfect phone in the world for everybody. People have their preferences and preferences are always gonna be different and I don't think everyone should all think the same way, right? But I do also want to mention to everybody out there, like there are th there are things that are not the best with the Google Pixel 5a. And so in this video, this is kind of just like before you buy. So I will link this video in the video from three weeks ago. Um, so people can catch that in the comments and kind of like watch this first before going forward. And um, yeah, uh, so one of the things that I will kind of point out with the Google Pixel 5a that I felt is, you know, like a little tough thing about it support by carriers now i've noticed that when it comes to eSIM, because some people just prefer to activate with eSIM, they don't want to use a physical sim card there's nothing wrong with that i'm not gonna like you know pick on people for you know physical sim versus eSIM. that's not what i do but yes i understand people want to activate with eSIM, and it seems like the only carriers that support this with eSIM happen to be t-mobile based use so companies like google fi and you know um was it like i think it's ting I think it's Ting, one of those, um, would be the ones to support it. Basically, anything that's T-Mobile based would support it, right? Going with Visible and plugging into IMEI2 tells me this phone's not compatible. And, you know, with US Mobile and, and, and you know, um, other Mobile X, it's not compatible. They all say the same thing when I talk to customer care. Like, for some reason, it's not compatible. Crazy, right? Because I do have uh, Visible currently running right now in the Pixel 5a, and that's through physical SIM card, right? Pop it in, and it works. Um, so that's one of the things that I think that people should know about and will probably frown upon is the uh, the lack of the lack of support from different carriers on eSIM with the Pixel 5a. Why is that? I'm not entirely sure because the Pixel 5, which has the exact same specs as this phone, uh, is supported on all those carriers. So it doesn't make sense to me. It's supported. You can put a 5 on eSIM with Visible. You can put it on there with, you know, um, US Mobile. You can put it on there with, with any with any non-T-Mobile based carrier and the 5 will activate on it. But for some reason, the 5A is just pretty much stuck to T-Mobile based uh, networks to use eSIM. So weird. But that's just like one thing that I find crazy strange about it. Um, of course, there has been things like the black screen of death, right? Where... You know, your phone will look exactly like this. And when you hit the power button to wake it, uh, the screen does not wake up. It stays that way. Some people were able to fix theirs by, you know, just force rebooting the phone and it worked. Other people had to blindly access recovery and do a full wipe without even knowing what selection they were on. Just going off of muscle memory as to where the wipe data factory reset in, um, you know, the uh, stock recovery is. That was crazy that people could do that. Uh, and that fixed it. But there were other people that um, just no saving grace. I am one of them. I am absolutely one of them. Uh, just to show people, because someone was, that was like asking me if I still have the, uh, the Pixel 5a that doesn't work. And it's right here. But I have two of them. This one doesn't work. This one does. I can get this one fixed just by taking it in. Probably having them replace the screen. But there was no point. I bought another one anyway. So that will sit there. Um, maybe I'll take the battery out of it and just put it up at the display in the back. Who knows? But anyways, um, yeah, that was one issue that people faced with the Pixel 5a, which is kind of crazy. Now, recently, Google dropped a QPR2 uh, beta 3.2 for Android 14 for the Pixel 5a. And it was only specific to the Pixel 5a. No other Pixel device got that update. And it fixed a bunch of issues that was reported by Pixel users. And there was a whole list of issues that were ticketed that were, you know, basically shown in the, um, the update notes. So if you went and you looked at Android 14 QPR2 beta 3.2, and you saw the one for the Pixel 5a, there's a list of all these issue ticket numbers and that update fixed those issues. Um, oh, kind of strange. Uh, so this was the only one impacted by those issues. Other Pixel devices were not. And again, like I said, you know, it's just one of those weird, weird things that, that um, I don't know. There's a lot of weirdness to the Pixel 5a. I guess that's why I'm like, gravitated towards it. While it gives me the Pixel experience, while it's a solid phone, decent battery life, decent cameras, all those good things that I enjoy out of a phone, it also got some mystery behind it as to like, why, why do you have small issues hidden here and why 
do you only like T-Mobile for your eSIM? I mean, th those are things that, you know, I think about not like an, on a, every second bit, you know, second by second basis type of thing. Uh, overall, the experience is really good on it. And, um, you know, I keep up on my Google Pixel devices to know if there's any issues to be concerned about. And so yeah, I'm always trying to be a step ahead just to know like if there's gonna be issues with it. And so far, not. With this, with my Pixel Buds A, with my Pixel Watch, it's a great combination for me. And that's why I still use it, even though it does have some slight problems. These problems may affect you, which is why I'm making this video. So you guys know what you're getting into if you happen to decide to pick up a Google Pixel 5A in 2024. Other than that, if those things aren't a major concern to you as you know they're not plagued like not every pixel 5a is plagued with this problem obviously this one didn't get the black screen to death it's still chugging along just fine so i'm just saying but i just want you guys to know right being a real person that you know uses these phones and puts myself in just the everyday user uh shoes i would want someone to tell me about these things and that's the reason why i made this video is to tell you guys about it let me know what you guys' thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for checking out my video. Check out the Pixel 5a Can't Be Beaten 2024 video to know all the positives about this phone. I appreciate you all for watching.